Hello, you're now in session three of Primer 2 on Project Management in ICTD. In this session, we will discuss project initiation, what it means and the basics on how we do it. The session learning objectives are discuss the use of project cycle management, logical framework approach, or the PCM-LFA in project identification and initiation, learn an analytical and design tools of the LFA in project identification and formulation, such as problem analysis, objectives analysis, options analysis, and preparing the log frame. In session one, we introduce to you the life cycle of projects. Here on the screen are the different phases of project management using the project cycle management approach. In this session, we will focus on the initiation stage that covers problems, identification, and strategy formulation of a new project. Now, let us backtrack a bit before we proceed to the initiation phase. There is a background activity that must have happened before we get to an idea of a new project. Prior to the initiation phase is the pre-initiation stage, when previous activities may have happened between the sponsor and the group that prepared the concept of a project. The prior activities may have included a needs assessment, an environment scanning to check on policies that support or do not support the project, technological issues and requirements, organizational issues and requirements, also looking for financial issues and requirements, cost-benefit analysis, conduct of a feasibility study that includes legal feasibility, operational feasibility, and schedule feasibility. In preparation for the initiation phase, the identification and formulation processes of a project must be supported by accurate, reliable, and sufficient information to have a correct diagnosis of the problem. In accessing information that we need, we can talk with people who know about the situation and the problem that you want to tackle, or we can get relevant documents that can help draw a good picture of the project environment or the project context. Here in this graphical presentation, it shows the different stages of what a project has to go through until it is completed. The project's initiation output is a business case or the project concept. The concept must be based on studies, on environmental scanning, and on the different processes of project development. The project identification process must ensure that the project concepts are based on solid ground and are, are identified as the one from the many options that will effectively address the need of the organization. The initiation phase covers the identification and formulation of a project. In Primer 2, and in this session, the use of planning methods for identification and formulation of the project, the project cycle management, the logical framework approach will be introduced. The tools that we will introduce is the logical framework approach. In the illustration, you are presented a logical hierarchy of objectives. The overall objective is the highest or the ultimate objective that is followed by purpose and then the results at the lower end are the outputs. Let us read what the LFA is all about. The LFA log frame uh, analysis 
is an analytical, presentational, and management tool which can help planners and managers one, analyze the existing situation during activity preparation. Two, establish a logical hierarchy of means by which objectives will be reached. Three, identify the potential risks to achieving the objectives and to sustainable outcomes. Four, Establish how outputs and outcomes might best be monitored and evaluated. If desired, present a summary of the activity in a standard format and monitor and review activities during implementation. As a tool, the logical framework approach, or also called the LFA, has an analysis phase and a planning phase. Let us briefly go through some of the analysis and planning phase. In the previous session, we've already undertaken exercises on stakeholder analysis. Let me introduce to you now the other analytical tools in project identification and formulation. The problem analysis, the objective analysis, and the strategy analysis. After going through the analysis is the design stage, which includes the process of developing a logical framework matrix, or also called the log frame, followed by the activity scheduling and the resource scheduling. Let us, briefly, let us briefly describe each process in the analytical stage. The stakeholder analysis involves a process of identifying and characterizing potential major stakeholders, assessing their capacity to contribute to the pro project problem analysis, which entails the process of identifying key problems, constraints, and opportunities determining cause and effect relationships. Whereas the objective analysis involves a process of developing solutions from the identified problems, identifying means to end relationships. And the strategy analysis is into identifying different strategies to achieve solutions, selecting most appropriate strategy. Since the stakeholder has already been taken up, let's now focus on problem analysis. Problem analysis is the process of identifying key problems, constraints and opportunities, determining cause and effect relationships, and a tool that is used here is called problem tree analysis. It identifies and analyzes how problems relate to each other. This is important in deciding which problems are the ones that the project should focus on and try to address. Creating a diagram gives a visualization and appreciation of the problem network and how these can be helpful in identifying solutions and later the project objectives. The problem tree is an analytical tool that helps identify the causes and effects of a problem. Of course, a community or organization has many problems, but we will only have to choose one that we may have the capacity to solve. In this graphical presentation of the problem tree, you will see that a main problem is identified as a focal problem. The main problem is placed at the center as it is here that we start the problem analysis. Under the focal problem are several causes and above it are the effects. 
So from the focal problem, we do a process that will help us identify the causes and the effects in a logical manner. This exercise assumes that you have data and good information about a community or organization so that this can be used in this analytical process. Let us say that in a certain community, it was observed that many children die because of diarrheal disease and that there seems to be a connection of the disease with the problem of water. Water shortage of safe drinking water, that is. Let's say that we have decided to choose this as the problem to tackle. So, here are the steps that can guide us to do the problem tree analysis. This activity is best done in a collective process. So, let us read through the guide. Follow the steps below to construct a problem tree. You may use post-it stickers as you create the tree. Step 1. Brainstorm with your team. Identify major problems existing within the given case situation. And then uh, step two, from among the many problems, select an individual starter problem. Step three, look for related problems to the starter problem and cluster them together. Step four, Establish a hierarchy of causes and effects. Problems which are directly causing the starter problems are put below. Ask the question, why? Why? To identify and validate what's causing the problem until you reach the real cause. Problems which are directly um, effects of a starter problem are put above. Ask the question, what results of the problem to identify and validate the effects. Then step five, complete with all other problems accordingly. Step six, connect the problems with cause and effect arrows. Step seven, review the diagram and validate its completeness. If we were to read the above example, we can start the central problem statement going down by asking the question, why is there a shortage of safe drinking water in this community? The answers to the questions branch out into four. There's a shortage of safe drinking water in the community, one, because there is increased demand in farm use, two, because there is increased demand in household use, Three, because there are not enough wells in the community. And four, because the open wells dried up. To go to the root of the problems, you use each answer and ask the question, why again? For instance, why is there an increased demand in farm use? Another layer of answer comes up because the farming methods used require intensive water use. Why is there increased demand in household use? Answer, because population increased and more water is used up, and so on. To know the effects of the central problem, the following questions is asked. What is the effect of the lack of safe drinking water? The example shows two answers. The lack of water has resulted in higher cost of water collection. And two, the lack of water has pushed people to use dirty sources that are unsafe. Probing deeper into the problem, the effects of these two answers are asked. What is the effect of higher cost in water collection? And what's the effect of dirty sources of drinking water? Relating to the first question on higher collection charges for water, this has resulted in people having less time for farming and people having to buy water from other sources. 
Related to the other question on dirty sources of drinking water, this has resulted in increased disease in the community and an increased mortality rate. The technique is to ask the right questions starting from the central problem statement. The LFA offers another tool to develop the objectives of the project. The objectives analysis provides a method to define the objectives of the project. From the problems identified in the problem analysis, solutions can be derived from the process of identification and analysis. The objectives should relate directly to the problem analysis which identified key problems and their causal relationships among other problems. Using a similar pattern, the objectives analysis uses the objectives tree to identify the necessary solutions and the links between these solutions. Each level of the objectives tree represents a means to achievement at the next level. It can be represented graphically as shown in figure 6. Now, side by side with the results of the problem analysis, the problems can be converted into positive statements for the objectives analysis. The causes identified in the problem tree can be converted to become the hierarchical means or ways to solve the presented problem. In the same manner, the effects identified in the problem tree are converted as logical ends or the results and outcomes that are desired. Using a graphical illustration, the objectives tree is a reversal of the problem tree. The focal problem becomes the focal objective. The causes becomes the means and the, effect, the effects become the end results. In the process of doing the objectives tree, make use of the following steps. Step 1. Reformulate, rewrite all negative situations of the problem analysis into positive situations that are desirable, realistically achievable. And then in step 2, check the means and ends relationship. Thus, derive the ensured validity and completeness of the hierarchy cause and effect relationships. They are turned into means and linkages. Step 3. If necessary, revise statements. Add new objectives if, if these seem to be relevant and necessary to ad achieve the objective at the next higher level. Delete objectives which do not seem suitable, convenient, or necessary. The tree is a picture of the future desired situation and the elements necessary to achieve it. Now let us use the problems identified in the community health project. It provides examples of converting the negative words of the problem to positive words to state the objectives. In the problem example, high infant mortality rate becomes an objective example. Okay, uh, if you reverse it, it becomes reduced infant mortality. The problem of shortage of safe drinking water is translated into an objective example, which is improved access to safe drinking water. The problem not enough wells is made into an objective of more wells dug up and so on. So the objectives of the tree will look like this illustration. Objectives are worded and written in a way that describes the condition which 
an improvement to the situation will bring about. Unlike a problem tree, the order in which problems are transformed into objectives has no particular relevance and thus, one can start at any point. However, it is important the objectives are realistic, achievable, and desirable. The strategy analysis helps identify which problem and solution will be most suited for your project. Prioritizing and choosing the most feasible, achievable, and desirable and relevant solutions must follow. Having a clear idea of what options are available can help prioritize which project objectives to choose. There are seldom enough resources to do everything, and resources that do exist should thus be invested in areas where they will have the most benefit. From the objectives tree, a number of solutions or options can be identified. These options can be clustered or grouped together to help prioritize and choose the solutions to address. A, pro a project cannot solve all the problems identified in the problem tree since resources are limited. Thus, it can only solve a part or parts of the problem. From the objectives tree, from the objectives tree of the community health project, clusters of options appear, such as decreasing the demand for farm use, reducing the wastage of household water, digging more wells, protecting the wells, and repairing the pumps. The, pod, the project went through an options assessment. And the strategy selected is the cluster of activities that include digging of more wells, protecting the wells, and repairing the pumps. So, from the case example of the health project, we analyze the options. Option 1, decreasing the water demand for farm use. Is it option two, reducing the waste stage of household water? Option three, digging more wells, protecting the wells, and repairing the pumps. Okay. So our criteria for selecting project options, um, the succeeding discussions offer guiding questions that can help the project team select the best solutions or options for the main problem of the project. The guide questions pertain to factors in the internal and external environment of the project. These factors include feasibility, costs, benefits, probability of achieving the objectives, risk factors, and social acceptability. So what is feasibility? Uh, to address the feasibility of project options, questions to ask include the following. Does the project have the capacity and resources to address the problem identified? Is the project practical and realistic? Now, some needs, although pressing, cannot be addressed by the project implementer. The project conceived may be too large or it may help to approach the project option in smaller chunks. In other words, you can make the project smaller in scope, but designed to lead to larger new projects in the future. Thus, you build one project after another in progression until you reach the desired project goal. The next item is can the mon can cost no can the money needed to implement the project be found within the local area or organization or from external support agencies 
Will the money be spent on promoting self-help and building capacity or encouraging dependency? Another point of assessment is benefits. Who will benefit from the project? Do these people or institutions fall within the priority groups among the stakeholders? Example, poor rural people. Are benefits mutual for both the organization and the local people involved? Will the project help to build sustainable relationships among stakeholders so that they continue to reap the benefits of the project even after the project ends? What's the probability of achieving objectives? Is the project likely to work or is it based on wishful thinking? It makes sense to invest time, effort, and other resources in a project that is likely to succeed. Then you have social risk and acceptability. Is the project appropriate to the local people and to the area in which it will be situated? Issues of appropriateness include cultural sensitivity, environmental effects, selection of technology, financial and economic matters, gender issues, and effects on local institutions and social structures. Will it contribute to the re reduction of inequalities? Furthermore, Local people may have their own criteria for supporting a project. Knowing and having these informations and discuss documented will help make the local project actors or primary beneficiaries own the project. Project ownership is a sustainability measure that can make the benefits of the project more lasting for the beneficiaries. Let's go now to op options assessment tools. Depending on the scope, the amount of work entailed, the resources, the budget, selecting a strategy may either result in forming a large project intervention or a program that consists of a number of smaller projects. When an option or idea for a project has been identified, a document should be prepared that contains the problem situation, the objectives analysis, the possible options, the chosen option, and the criteria used to select the option. This should be done before detailed planning of the chosen project takes place. In the next phase, which is the project design, the detailed objectives, outputs, activities, and tasks will be developed. The table, the table in your screen shows an options assessment tool that you can use to decide and select the best choice from the list of possible projects. The assessment tool helps you rate the project as low, medium, and high options or by assigning a numerical value using the following criteria. Feasibility. Is the project relevant, practical, and realistic? Cost. Is the project within the budget parameter? Benefits. Are there gains that can be reaped from the project? Achievable objectives. Can the objectives be accomplished within a certain time period? Potential capacity of stakeholders. Are there stakeholders from within and outside the project that can support the project through the use of their financial or human resources? Social risks. Are there events that can threaten the project's life? Acceptability. Is the project up to standard? Does the project have culture, ethical, or political sensitivities to consider? Urgency. Is the Projects so significant that it can meet the immediate needs of primary stakeholders. Another tool that is useful in scanning the project environment and in select 
affecting the project strategy is the SWOT analysis. It looks at the strength, which is for S, weaknesses, W, opportunities, or the O, and threats for T of the project environment. The strengths and weaknesses refer to the internal environment of the project, while the opportunities and threats are external to the project environment. There are four combinations of strategic options that can result from the analysis. The S or the strength, opportunities O option or the S and O option. How can you use your strengths to take advantage of the opportunities? When the team or organization is dominantly strong and opportunities in the external environment are high and favorable, the S and O strategy is definitely a priority for a decision or a go for it. Decision or an explore, expand decision. The strengths S, threats T option. How can you take advantage of your strengths to avoid real and potential threats? When the team or organization is dominantly strong and the threats are high, strategic options may be a cautious go, making sure that actions required including raising basic awareness, planning, and implementation required to meet these challenges. Investment in these issues is generally safe and necessary. The question we raise here are we properly informed and organized to deal with these issues? And are we certain there are no hidden surprises? Or you can also ask, since we are strong here, can any of these opportunities or threats be turned into opportunities? The table is a SWOT matrix that you can use to assess project options. The first row represents the strengths and weaknesses of the project's internal situation. This includes looking at the capabilities of the project team members, the leadership, and the partner organizations, the skills, type of services, quality of services, reputation, the internal systems, organizational structure and process, and the financial status of the organization and partners. The second row represents the opportunities and threats in the external environment that can affect the project during its implementation. This includes looking at policies and laws at the local international level, uh, economic situation, for example, economic growth rates, market and industry trends, employment statistics and trends. In terms of social situation, you can look at literacy rates, gender relations, community cohesiveness, use of technology, uh, media freedom, for example. Political situation, are there interest groups, politics in power, and decision making at the local and national levels. Can also include cultural situation like norms, values, beliefs, language, and ethnicity. Steps that need to be taken to assess and select the best project options using a SWOT analysis are demonstrated using, for example, Clara's project. In the top of the quadrant, list all the strengths of a project option. For example, strong support from the Weavers Association. In the top right quadrant, list all the weaknesses of the same project option. For example, the Weavers Association's Association has low organizational and marketing skills. In the bottom left quadrant, 
list all the opportunities that you find outside the project environment. For example, favorable policy environment. In the bottom right quadrant, list all the threats. For example, environmental degradation. Writing the project concept or the project identification plan follows. The project concept is the basis for making the decision to initiate a project. It's a brief statement summarizing the purpose, approach, the necessary resources, the risks, and impact of a proposed project initiative. The, the, result, the result of the analysis leads to the, leads to the preparation of a detailed project planning matrix or the log frame. The matrix gives you an overall summary of your project plan. It gives the answers to the following questions. Where do you want to be? That's the overall objective and goal and purpose. How do we get there? Those are the outputs and the activities. How do we know that we're getting there? That will be indicated by indicators. What proofs do we have that we are getting there? These are your evidences. Now, another question is what potential problems will we encounter? Here are your assumptions and your risks. After all the analytical exercises are undertaken, a log frame matrix can be drawn to outline the general concept of the project. A log frame matrix consists of a four column and four row matrix, which summarizes the general concept of the project. The LFA project plan matrix consists of the vertical intervention logic and the horizontal intervention logic with corresponding elements. The vertical logic includes the goal, purpose, outputs, activities, and inputs. The horizontal intervention logic includes the objectively verifiable indicators, means of verification, and the critical assumptions. The vertical intervention logic um, one is the overall development objective. This is the main development objective that the project intends to contribute to in the long run. This objective will usually describe what the beneficiaries will obtain from the project. And is it related to the problem or need the project is seeking to address? Now, write the overall objectives as if it has already been achieved. For example, decreased incident and impact of the real disease. Next, number two is project purpose, immediate objectives or goals. The project purpose normally describes a change in the target group's behavior due to the project intervention. This is the immediate reason for a project describing the effects that the project is expected to achieve. If it is completed successfully, good. The objective should be smart and written as if they have already been achieved. Example, improve the access to and use of safe drinking water in the community. Three, results or outputs. Results are the goods, services, and products that the project makes available to the target group. Project management must be able to achieve the outputs listed for the project, provided the requested inputs are available. The results should be smart and written as if they have already been achieved. For example, result one, Participatory management systems established for needs identification, planning, and monitoring. Result two, 
Improve sources of safe drinking water. Result three, raised community awareness on good hygiene and practices. The fourth is activities. Activities are all the steps that the project takes to provide the various goods, services, and products listed as results. Care should be taken to ensure that the activities listed will realistically lead to the specified result. Again, activities should be smart and written as if they have already been achieved. For example, in results one, for results one to happen, a participatory management system must be established. Activities must include 1.1, establishment of water user committee in the community, 1.2, provision of training for water user committee members in surveying, planning, monitoring, and proposal writing, 1.3, Communities carry out baseline and monitoring surveys of water use and needs and submit proposals. 1.4, planning meetings to hold with local governments, water department, and water user committee. For the fifth, inputs. Inputs are the raw materials of a project and include funds, equipment, supplies, personnel, premises, etc. Inputs should be specified for each activity and should be sufficient to allow the activities to be carried out. The inputs can include the means, cost, and precondition of the project. Means include the ways to source the needed inputs. Will funds come from a donor group, investment, or both? Will the project get resources such as personnel by outsourcing? Or will the resources come from within the organization? Then we look at cost, the amount needed to complete the project. You also have to look at preconditions. What must be present for the project to proceed? Now let's write the objectives. When we do write the objectives for each level, we must make sure the statements are logically connected to each other. We can use the if-then test to check. Let us use uh, the community health project in, table nine, in the table previously shown to you to explain. So let us examine the activities and ask the question. If all the activities are carried out, will they result in the outputs? If we train members of the community to maintain and repair hand pumps as an activity, then sources of safe water will be improved. That's the output. If we train community health workers on their real diseases and the need for good hygiene practice, and if these community health workers train men, women, and children in good hygiene practice, which are the activities, then awareness on hygiene and sanitation practices are raised. Examine the outputs. And ask the question, if the outputs are met, will they achieve the purpose? If the sources of safe drinking water will be improved as an output, then access to safe water will be improved, which is the purpose. If the awareness on hygiene and sanitation practices is raised, which is the output, then access to safe drinking water will be improved. That is the purpose. Examine the purpose and ask the question, if the purpose is achieved, will it contribute to the overall objective? If the access to safe water is improved, that is the purpose, then the incidence and impact of the real disease will decrease. That's your overall objective. In writing the objectives, we may find the need to adjust the words 
in the objectives or add new objectives. We may also decide to remove some of the objectives if these do not seem relevant to the set of objectives. Now, let's go horizontal. Indicators are verifiable measures of the progress and success of a project. Indicators of output are usually simple. For example, the number of units of a product produced or the number of persons trained. But indicators may be more difficult to determine for the overall objectives and the project purpose. Indicators are based upon things that are essential to the accomplishment of an objective, output, or activity. And the questions that should be asked is, what indicator and verifiable evidence will prove that the objective output has been achieved? Now, each level of the vertical logic has a different level of indicator. Take a look at the sample indicators of the Community Health Project. Indicators should include the following. Quantity. The number of people, services, products okay, that uh, will be uh, addressed. Quality. To what standard will this be done? By schedule or time. By when will this occur? How frequent will it happen? And will it end at some point? What about location? Where will this be taking place? An example of an, an indicator, activity indicator from the Community Health Project is Water User Committees established in five regions by end of month three. So, it's very specific and measurable. Seven, means of verification or MOVs. The MOVs are the evidences, reports, and methods used to collect the information, data that will serve to verify the indicators. MOVs should be accessible, easy to gather, and reliable. Some important questions to consider when specifying MOVs for the indicators include the following. Are the MOVs available from normal sources? For example, statistics, observations, and reports. How reliable are the sources? Uh, is special data gathering required? Example, survey research. If so, what will it cost in terms of time and money? From the Community Health Project, log frame uh, example of MOVs include recorded information and activities such as attendance list and minutes of the meetings, documents such as reports, test results, letters of agreement, and government statistics. Research and observation study, field survey results, and interview transcripts are examples of documents. Then you have the critical or risk uh, factors, which are situation, events, conditions, or decisions that must exist and are necessary for the project to successfully happen, but are largely beyond the control of the project. In the community health project, in the log frame, some examples of the assumptions, specifically external factors that may affect the project that are listed at activities level are, for example, groundwater is free of arsenic, Communities have confidence that water sources can be improved. Community members will take responsibility to work for the community. Water user communities or communities continue to function in everyone's interest. The community is prepared to work with water user communities. 
In the previous section, the if-then test was used to check the logic link of each level. However, we can never be 100% certain that the objectives of each level will lead to the next because there will always be external factors that can affect the link between and among the objectives at each level. These external factors that either outside the control of the project or are too difficult or costly to control are mostly often the reasons of project failure, especially when insufficient attention is not given to them from the start. Now let's look at inputs again. These are raw materials of a project and include funds, equipment, supplies, personnel, premises. Inputs should be specified for each activity and should be sufficient to, to allow the activities to be carried out. The inputs can include the means, cost, preconditions of the project. Means include the ways to, to source the needed inputs. Will funds come from the donor group? Is investments or both? Will the project get resources such as personnel by outsourcing or will the resources come from within the organization? What about cost? The amount needed to complete the project. And then the preconditions, what must be present for the project to proceed. Project planning requires a detailed scheduling of activities that looks at what and when will the activities be implemented in the life of the project. In the LFA, the project activity schedule is organized according to the results and is shown in a graphic format called a Gantt chart. The Gantt chart of each project may vary according to the nature of the project but should convey the following information. This, the specific activity to be conducted, organized sequentially according to results. A specific time when this activity is to be undertaken and for how long. Who is to take responsibility for this activity? In project bad budgeting, project budgeting and LFA follows a detailed activity-based costing framework. In essence, the budget needs to directly correspond to the project log frame or plan. Each project result activity and subactivity needs to be clearly identified and budgeted, you know, for it to give an example of an activity resource and cost template that can help calculate the cost of each activity. So prepare a project design document. The result of the above activities is the preparation of a project plan or a project design. In other approaches, the initiation phase results in the approval of the business case and the project. The approval of the document is a project initiation phase milestone. It also means that you are proceeding to the next phase, the planning phase. The project initiation phase provides the processes to identify, clarify, analyze, and define the project. The PCM LFA offers tools to analyze stakeholders, problems, objectives, and strategic options. From the initiation phase, builds the process of formulating the project scope. This phase answers the following questions. What needs will the project address? How will the project be undertaken? What outcomes and targets must the project deliver? When the project scope is designed, the activity and resource scheduling and budgeting follow in preparation for the detailed planning of the project.